Hello everyone and welcome to this Slack tutorial for beginners where we'll be showing you how to use Slack. This tutorial is designed for you if you're just starting out or would like to get a refresher. It will introduce you to Slack, explaining how this popular communication app helps teams to collaborate more effectively by streamlining communication and organizing projects in one central place, reducing reliance on email. You can expect how to set up your own Slack account, including creating a workspace and inviting your teammates to join. And what is more, this tutorial will walk you through the main elements of Slack interface, ensuring you understand how to navigate through channels for team-based discussions, send direct messages for private conversations, keep track of important updates through the activity feed, and efficiently find information using the search functionality. So let's get into it. In order to begin, we're going to be going over to the top right corner to get started. But if you're a beginner and you already have an account, you can go through the sign-in process. So we're assuming you're just starting. So we're going to click on get started. And right here, you'll need to enter your work email or continue with Google or Apple. We'll be choosing continue with Google and we'll be taken to this page where we'll need to choose the exact Google account we'll be using. Then go ahead and click on continue to confirm that you'll be using this email. Then here on this page, you can see get started on Slack, create a workspace. Of course, if you want to opt into receiving marketing communications about Salesforce, including Slack, you can actually click the checkbox and this will happen for you. So right away, click on create a workspace. Now on this page, this is the first step out of four. And on this page, you will need to state the name of your company or team. So right here, you can see a placeholder example, Acme Marketing or Acme Co. So you're going to go ahead and put yours in. So we've given it a name, Connor Point. And again, this could be the company name or team. Click on next to step two. So here we have the name Dean Dutton. And here it says you'll need to put in your name and your profile photo. Now, this is important if you want your teammates to easily recognize and connect with you more easily. So you could go ahead and change your profile photo. Of course, this is optional. Then you have the edit photo right here. So we're going to click on next, leaving this, assuming we've actually changed it. And here you'll need to add a company that is corner point. You're going to add a coworker and this helps others to connect with you. So here we're going to put a coworker to invite to our team. Either you're putting the email address or you could copy the invite link and send it to them. Of course, if you're not ready for this, you can click on skip this step. But just to help you with the functionality, we'll be putting an email to invite someone. So as you can see, we have this email address added and you can see direct messages already by adding this, we can now send private messages to this person. So we're going to click on next. And here it says your workspace is ready to go. Start with Slack Pro if you want to. Of course, if you don't want to, you could click on start with a limited free version. Any of these options are fine depending on what you really want. Right, so here we have our pop-up for introductions and we can skip this. Of course, you could read through all of it, but we'll be showing you most of what you need to do. Of course, we're choosing the basic or the free version, and that's why you can see get 50% off Slack Pro. And then right here, this is our Slack. Welcome to your Slack dashboard. You can see that our Slack has four main sections. You have the main area, which takes up much of the space. This is where you'll be corresponding to messages, activities, etc. And then on the left side, you have the left panel where you can toggle between channels, direct messages, or different apps. And then on the little left panel, you have the icons, which you could also use to navigate. For example, you have DMs right here, and then you also have DMs right here. But the difference is this, with DMs, you can just see the icon, but here you get to see more details, such as those who have been writing you recently. And then at the top, you have your search area, where you can search corner point workspace, which is the name of your team or company. At the top right corner right here, you'll see a cluster of icons helping you to understand the number of members in this channel. For now, we're just about two. And of course, if you keep on adding others, you will see them right here. Now, right here, you have the huddle option. 
The huddle feature on Slack is designed for quick, informal conversations directly within the Slack channel or direct message. Think of it as your digital version of walking over to your colleague's desk for a quick chat or a spontaneous office hurdle. You could also use this to share screen or share video. Then of course, if you don't want to miss any notifications, you'll need to pay attention to this if it pops up at the bottom or at the top of your screen. Slack needs your permission to enable notifications. Click on enable notifications. And here you're going to be asked to allow. So click on allow, and then currently it's allowed. You can see the speaker icon right here and it will keep you current. Now, of course, as we mentioned before, we have our sidebar or the left panel. You have here your home, your DMs, activities, and more. Now here on your homepage, this is basically like the front door, and this is where you'll be at when you log on into your Slack account. You get to see your whole dashboard when you're on the home tab. Now, when we go over to the DMs, this is where you can find a coworker in order to send private messages. So because we added one person, we could come over to the find area right here, search for the member, and you can see here Team Audio T, click on that person, and you can send messages and receive messages from this person. All your messages will be private and will not be seen by other members of the team. Now in the input field, you can see some formatting options such as making your text bold, italics, strike through, adding a link or a list or bullet points. And you could also use the code option to embed some code in your text. You could also write a code block so you can explain if you're working with coding. Then at the bottom right here, you could attach anything. So if you click on the attach button, you could attach a canvas, enable GIFs in your team, list recent files, text snippet, workflow, or upload a file from your computer. And then of course you could click on hide formatting and this will take away the formatting option, making it more simple to look at. But of course, if you want to have the formatting options, they're there at your disposal. You can communicate with emojis to make the workplace more fun, tag someone, this might not be great if you're sending a personal message, but it's a feature you can use when you're in channels, which we'll be explaining in a moment. Then of course you could record a video clip, record an audio clip, or run a shortcut. So these are options you could use while communicating with others privately, or actually when you're in the channel as well, because this is the same input field you will be having whether you're in DM or in the channel or team area. Now, when you click on activity, it's a great place to get yourself up to speed. You can see right here, you're all caught up and looks like things are quiet for now. And this is important if you're trying to stay up to date. So if you went off work for a day or two, you can come back and come straight to activity and see what you missed. This will help you stay up to date with everything that is happening. Then of course you have the on reds. You could toggle this on or off. This basically means that you just want to see the activity that you've not observed. And this is currently on for on reds and you're going to see only activity you haven't seen. Now, when we come over to more, there are more options right here. There are templates, automations, canvases, lists, files, channels, people. So if you click on files, this is where you can see recently viewed files shared with you, created by you and all files and you can see everything right here. When we click on more again, you can see people. When you click on people, you most likely be seeing everyone who is in your workspace. As you can see, Dean Dutton, that is me. And of course you can see the invited team member. You can see everyone right here. There are filters, titles, locations to filter through, and you can see most recommended, or of course you could sort through A to Z or Z to A. Then here, of course, you could invite more people using this button or using this one. When we click on more again, you can see the option for channels. When you click on channels, you can search through the different channels available on this workspace. And right here, you can actually create a channel. For example, if you'd like to create a channel for a team member who will be using it to create a sub team within the workspace, you can click on create a channel and you could give this channel a name. So you have here blank channel, project starter kit, help request process, team support, one-on-one -on -one coaching. 
new hire onboarding. So this is great if you want to have a channel for new hires, right? So this is why Slack is quite popular and it helps to streamline communication and organizing different projects or processes such as onboarding. Now, if you want to have team support, you have everything at your fingertips right here. Then of course you have your blank channel and this is up to you to decide which channel you'd like to make. We could go ahead and choose a new hire onboarding channel, click on next. And then it gives some explanation right here, template features such as messaging, onboarding guide, first week to do's and join team channel. So click use template. So we can see right here, the channel name, you can see welcome newbies, right? And then here you have the visibility to be public and anyone in corner point will see it. And this is important for newbies. Of course, if you want to create a private channel, this option is also available, but this might not be suitable for what we're doing. So we'll leave it in public then click on create. And here it says add people to newbies. It says add all members of corner point. That will not be ideal because not everyone is a newbie. So we're going to click on add specific people. And then here we're going to put in team audio T, which is the email address, which we added from the beginning. So we want to assume that team audio T is actually a newbie. Then we're going to say add. And now we have newbies channel right here. Now the great thing about this channel is whatever is written here will be targeted and streamlined to those who are in the newbies channel. And that's why we got to choose whether we wanted to add everyone or specific persons. So that's what channels are for. And we've explained what huddles are also for. Then you also understand how you can use direct messages to send messages to specific persons within the whole workspace of corner point. And then of course, right here, you have different apps and you can add apps when you click on it, you'll be taken to this page where you can add other apps that will help you to streamline your workflow, improve it and make it more dynamic. So here you have templates, workflows, recently used and managed by you. When we go back to the home button right there, you can see at the top right there, corner point, and it's a drop down. And when you use this drop down, you can see the option to upgrade your plan, invite more people, and you can see preferences. And here you can filter your sidebar, your tool settings, and open the desktop app. Maybe you might've noticed that we're using the browser version, but then again, we have the Slack desktop app and you could use this instead of using this. It's really up to you. Then you can sign in on mobile to be able to keep track of work on the go. And you can sign up right here if you want to. And of course you have the option to create new and here you could create a new message, a new channel, huddle, canvas, list, workflow, or of course invite people. You might have noticed that there are several options to invite people. This is because Slack is a collaborative space and it works well when we have everyone in the company or team working together right here. Then of course, lastly, we have the search corner point option and here you could use it to search for practically anything. You could use it to search for messages, searching for a document, a decision that has been made using a keyword, or you could search for people as well. So this is a global search option within the workspace of your team. We hope at this point you're able to use Slack as a beginner and you can go ahead and make a success working with your team and make a more seamless workflow and enjoy doing it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.